John and Chaz. I'm John. I'm Chaz. Hey, hey. Looks like we broke the Vim TV browser. That's all right. Well, we, I'm fine with we, that. We can do that. Our, uh, there's just something about Friday mornings that uh, my internet provider does not like when I go live. So Maybe, maybe they got you, uh, you marked, you flagged as a bad representative. Or yeah, well, they know, I hate, they know I hate them, and I will jump off their bandwagon as soon as another <laughs> cable provider provides, uh, you know, good internet. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm going through the same thing. Yeah. So cool. Uh, how's it going? Good. good. Ready uh, for today? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was sort of like going through withdrawals, not doing a show for a while. So it's we're weird. back. Uh, yeah, we got some good stuff, though, we're going to talk about today, our favorites. My slides are so ugly, and I didn't get a chance what? to go through. I was going to say, what's up with those slides? I was like, I put in the stuff, and I had every intention of going in and, and getting getting them all cleaned up and sorted, but wasn't able to do it. So we're going on the fly today, guys. That's all right. We can Happy do that. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> um, we are live on the G1N Token account today. This is our new home for the show. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, G1NBC uh, website for Morning Coins and talk a little bit about that for a second. And then we'll get into our uh, crypto projects and blockchain, distributed ledger technology, and things that, 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 that Chaz and I are passionate about. You guys can chat with us, or you can tweet at me. It's SGE Media Group on Twitter. is my Twitter account right now. We don't have one for the show or for the g and Token account, but we'll have some of that stuff coming soon. Um, and let us know your five projects so we can so we can rattle those off here. So as soon as my internet stops being funky uh we'll be able to get that stuff integrated in so actually chaz let's go ahead well no we uh we can't really because i have the i have the slides unless you wanted to screen share the slides well, i can do that that's not a problem okay why don't you screen share the slides then Looking good. Okay. Looking good. Let me get rid of the overlay, but you can go ahead. All right. So uh, well, let's go through the disclaimer. And, uh, you know, we, we do this every day, and a lot of people do disclaimers. But what we're trying to say here is that we don't have all the information that you need to make investments because cryptocurrencies, futures, stocks, and options trading involve substantial risk of loss and are not suitable for every investor. The valuations of cryptocurrencies, futures, stocks, and options may fluctuate, and as a result, clients may lose more than their original investment. All investments discussed on this show are for informational purposes only and are not recommendations to buy or sell. Well, thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Good job. So with that, uh-oh. How's he doing? How's Jakey doing over there? So for for those of you guys that are tuning in for the first time, uh, that is our ex producer. He found a new home. His name's Jakey. So, yeah, Jake's uh, look. You just look at him. He's uh, he's settled in. He he's looks on, he looks fat and happy. He looks like how he was doing when he was our producer. Yeah, he's pretty much in the same position as he was during the show. So it was a lateral move for him. Yeah, for him, it was sort of lateral, but, you know, he gets a lot more attention, and in this picture, he is on someone's lap. Okay, well, maybe it was a promotion then. Yeah, so he's, uh, I'm happy for him. He's a good boy, and I'm glad he's got a family now that can take care of him. Good. So, we had, uh, I had found some interesting links. Okay, uh, Let, let's go through some of those. Okay, so, I found this neat page which shows 2018's failed crypto projects. 
1,000 dead cryptocurrency projects. Ah, that's not bad. Uh, not in the bigger picture of things, no, because that is part of the vetting process, right? Uh -huh. Getting rid of uh, getting rid of projects or projects that, and there's there they had two classifications of projects here. One was just failed, you know, they just couldn't do it. The other one was scams. So they list right. the scams as well, like BitConnect is right up there. Oh, sure. You know, and so they list those. Um, it's a, it's a good read just to go through. It gives you an idea what, you know, what can happen. Is USI Tech on there? I think they're still in business. What? I, I think USI Tech is still in business. I didn't check that far. Huh. But, so they must not be on the list then. Yeah, so I, I think that, uh, that's a good point. We should check that for the next show. But USI Tech was running a private project. So, you know, you have to be on the inside to know what's going on. Right, right, right. And so that's good. We'll check that for next time and see. We'll, we'll give an update on USI Tech. Okay. Um, Chinese survey. Respondents of their survey think Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are unnecessary. 63, I think, 63%, uh, I think. Oh, interesting. I thought we had a little bit more love. Yeah, I thought so too. Digital but, currencies you know, over there. Yeah, so uh, what I'm seeing here is though is that I'd like to see more surveys and see what what went on. I did not read the total survey, so I can't tell you how they asked the question. You know, that's sort of a broad spectrum response there. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see um, how that pans out in in the future. Uh, set next one, the third link. This is one. It's uh, one of my favorites. Wells Fargo Bank scam. Wells Fargo scam their. For those of you who don't know, scam their uh, customers. What they did was they placed their employees in such an untenable position that they had to actually open up fake accounts. And Wells Fargo, knowing it was going on, said nothing. You know, it was sort of the one of those wink and a nod things. Mm -hmm. Oh, stop. Don't open up that account and then let them do it anyway. So they say that Bitcoin is too risky for their clients. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I think, I think doing business with Wells Fargo is probably too risky. Right. Right. You know, and then there's a, they, they were fined for their inappropriate and illegal actions, $575 million, which compared to their total revenues is like a pocket change so well, they really got off easy right and, and, and it's interesting right because then you have circle which is own. I, i'm not sure who circle is owned by i think it's jp it's one of the one of the bigger ones and uh they're kind of all in right because circle has the poloniex exchange and they're trying to circle the wagons and I think I have one of the news sources on here about Circle as well on my slide. So we'll get into that in a minute. So, yeah, it's interesting to see where these big financial institutions are falling with distributed ledger technology and, and how they think some of these uh, crypto projects and crypto development things are going to pan out. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, there's that initial resistance to new ideas and technology that they all go through and eventually they have to succumb to the uh, reality. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share uh, my screen here for a minute so you guys can see it. All right. Let me unshare. And we'll go back to the links because I have the website up and I want to use it before my uh, computer goes down again. So you guys should be able to see that. That's our Morning Coins webpage, our new G1NBC webpage for morning coins for the show so what we're gonna and you can see that too Chaz right yeah it just popped up yeah yeah so what's gonna show up here you guys is uh, right under here is gonna be the watch morning coins live we'll always have the the an embedded link to Vim TV which is our broadcasting partner right now and we appreciate the work that they do so that player will be under there and then we'll have the updated show information we usually broadcast at 10 a.m. On Fridays, sometimes give or take, it's about 10:15 because we're doing internet stuff here, and sometimes computers don't 
always register with what you want them to do. Um, and then each episode will be put up, will be posted here, and then you'll see our uh, YouTube playlist of previous episodes probably over here on the right-hand sidebar. Um, what I want to do with you guys and for, for you guys that are watching that are on Steam and utilizing the Steam blockchain is this website also has uh, the Steam Press uh, API built in. And mm -hmm. if you guys don't know, the Steam Press API also has now where people that are moderators for the page can all enter their own um, enter their own codes in here and have their own accounts set up. So I want to do something where we partner with folks to highlight their op-eds um, that they're posting on Steam and figure out a way to share the delegations and give you guys a majority percentage of the revenue that you get from posting to the site. And we'll be doing the same as well. So if you're interested in, in working with us to to enter into a contract to post your content over here and publish it to um, your stuff, then let's let's just have that conversation because we, we have to figure out the details on how that would work. But I just wanted you guys all to know that that, that was an available option um, and another extension of your content. So if you're already writing, you can post it on our G1NBC site. Let's use the power of the Internet to uh, to help the show grow and, and give your content more legs as well. Uh, the other two things I wanted to show you, you, you see the, our little Diablo Salsa banner ad and then the Ultimate uh, Body Michigan banner ad. Both of those spaces are available for promotion um, and to get your uh, banner ads up there and things like that. So if you are interested or you have some banner ads and we're not, we are a privately owned independent media company, so we're not beholden to um, some of these companies that aren't allowed to uh, publicize and put up ads for different types of companies. So if you think that having an ad on our show would be a benefit and you want to get the word out, uh, these ads go up and then we redirect to any link that you guys provide. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can also the link to the Vim TV Discord, I'm on there. Uh, so you just follow that link, join the Vim TV Discord, and hit me up. And if not, you can just reply to the g one Token account in the memo um, by transferring .001 Steam. And we'll figure out a way to meet up and get some stuff going. Excellent. All right, back to you. You can screen share and... Okay. I'm going to get these slides back up. You guys, forgive me if you're chatting live, because uh, our my internet's slow over here, so I cannot bring those comments in. Okay, so can you see the screen now, John? Yep, looks good. Okay, so the, the fourth uh, link, Visa buys Ripple Partner Earthport. Uh oh, what is going on there? Uh oh, <laughs> I think Visa wants in on the on this. Uh, well, what? they don't want to get left in the, you know, they don't want to get left in the lurch, man. Visa is the one that stands to lose the most if Ripple is successful in what they say they're going to do. Right. Which I is... mean, actually, they all are, right? If blockchain is as successful as they want to be, I'm sorry, Bitcoin. Visa, you know, so you can see right there, I mean, Ripple's a little bit more considered a centralized project, so it's, you know, that's probably why they're going over there. Yeah, I would think that uh, that would be a big plus for them, not being, you know, uh, decentralized. It would allow them some control, but I just thought that was an interesting uh you know, after you read the Wells Fargo thing, it says, you know, Bitcoin's too risky. Then you see this. For sure. <laughs> it's all um, polarized, right? You, you, get, yeah. you get a survey that says, oh, we don't need it. You get another one that says, oh, we just acquired this. <laughs> it's the Betamax VHS argument. Is it? Yeah, it is. Centralized. So? Well, oh, oh about, gotcha. I got you. You had two competing technologies trying to uh, 
trying to be the best and one makes it and the other one doesn't. Yep. Yep. So Visa wants to be the one that makes it. So moving along, uh, National Bank of Kuwait joins RippleNet, one of the bigger banks in the world. I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, yeah, you're not going to dwell on it, but I'm sensing a theme here. Someone's doing some XRP research again. Yeah, I just, well, you know, it's, that's part of the thing on our disclaimer, you know, it's just like it's informational purpose. I'm sort of an information hog anyway, so mm -hmm. I, I just get out there and I want to know what's really going on. I don't want to, you know, because you see all these comments, videos, posts, Ripple's going to $1,000 a coin and it's like, or a token. And I'm like, well, okay, but I don't see that yet. I want to know more. So sure. I, I dig, I get out there and I dig. Good. Uh, Night of the Living Coins, uh, there's uh, coins that are considered dead but are alive. They're, they're still there, so they don't fall into the failed projects list yet. So we will okay. uh, see how that works out. Uh, so these are coins that people are saying are just are non-starters, I guess, is what, what, what the word would be. Um, Blockchain, coin, uh, the article on Cointelegraph. Blockchain, dead end street. A, cult, a consulting firm, McKinsey, finds little evidence of practical blockchain use cases. And I'm like, seriously? I mean, <laughs> our whole show is based on use cases. What, this is, this um, broadcasting live on Vim, getting upvotes in Steam from our followers and being able to embed it onto a third party or a different website for our own business development is a use case for digital currency. <laughs> I think this is another one of those situations that the people doing the, the talking don't understand. You can buy t-shirts, socks, sweaters. <laughs> you can trade back and forth. There's so many different use cases. You can crowdfund. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Video yeah. game platforms use it. it. It it's I mean, to say something that to say something like that shows that you really don't know what you're talking about. And so you know what? They're a consulting firm. Imagine the advice that they're giving these organizations that are asking them whether or not they should go and look at integrating blockchain technology into their operations. I see a major consulting firm going out of business. <laughs> bye bye. And if yeah. they do, make sure you guys contact S and G Endeavors for all of your consulting needs uh, for the 21st century, leading real world uh, and strategic planning change um, by increasing collaboration and productivity in your workplace. Excellent. Nice plug. I'll hit the last link here. Uh, I had put a link up uh, on the last show we did regarding a uh, cryptocurrency bill that was going to exclude them from the securities laws, and I found out that that is not true. That's just another one of those fake news items. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I put that up there just to retract that so people wouldn't uh, get all excited about nothing. Good, 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 good. So here's what here's what I need to do. I need to give I need to like take some slides and move them around. Okay. So if you can focus on your slides for a second, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the back end so that when we actually go to my slides, they're they're digestible. Okay. So yeah, I get it. So I'll, I'll stall, okay? <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. Pay attention. <laughs> don't pay any attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> so we had uh, John and came up with an idea about doing our favorites. Uh, the 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 number was five, but I came up with six because there's just one I couldn't leave out. Uh, one of my favorites is Denticoin, and uh, Denticoin. I'm going to see if I can pull this link up here because I got a link. There we go. Uh, Denticoin, when we first looked at Denticoin, uh, they were in their initial stages of operation. And just for a brief overview, Denticoin is 
is a blockchain project that is going to help people have healthier teeth. And they are going to work with dentists and patients in order to get them to do first, the dentists to do their job, and they get paid for doing their job, of course. And then patients who are given a regimen of taking care of their teeth, and once they complete that regimen, they're going to get paid as well. So it's like a win-win situation. I think, I'm just doing this from memory, the last time we looked at Denticoin, when we did the, the show, uh, they had like, I think it was like 300 or 400 dentist. Well, if you look on their page now, which I have up there, they are up to 800, 1800 dentists that are involved in the program. And it is growing. Wow. Currently they're, of course, they're, they're trying to work in different countries. Uh, they're in New York. I know heavily in the New York's uh, state. Um, they're not in this side. Uh, they're not in Michigan as far as I could tell, but they're expanding. And I think this is just going to, this project is moving. It is becoming successful. So I, that, I, based on that kind of thing, it has a use case. Uh, people's health are, is important. I would love to see the, the medical community in general start these projects. Like for my doctor, when I go to my doctor for, for health care, that he could be a part of a program like this. I would love to see this started up. And maybe, maybe once Denticoin gets... Uh, their foundation built. Maybe they can expand into the, that other area. That's really neat. I'm going to take a, I, ha, I do have a chart I put together for them so we can just track uh, the history. Well, you can see here that uh, it's not looking real sweet, but there is a recovery right down here on this chart. These uh, blue circles with the PN are uh, candlestick patterns. Let's see if I can get that to come up. Nope, not going to do it for me. Anyway, uh, on, the, on the normal website, when you uh, pull up the, the chart and you wave over those blue circles, you, they will explain to you what the candlestick pattern is. So you can tell what it's going to, what what the prediction might be, but and, and this is pretty much following the general market. Um, I don't see anything different here than we've seen in Bitcoin, but we do see a recovery, which is sort of nice. One of my favorites is Mana. Universal basic income that is not government sponsored or municipality sponsored. And uh, they have uh, recently added uh, minor accounts, child, they call them children accounts, I think, uh, to so that you can sign up your kids for universal basic income. Now, I didn't do the math on this uh, because I'm thinking that the value of this coin is going to improve with time, and that is going to make a significant difference on the actual value of the accounts that are opened up. But let's say you got a kid that's uh, about, let's say they're five years old. Well, and I'm giving away my age here, but I think now when you're born, you get a social security number right away. That was something you had when I was young. You had to sign up for it later. Oh, really? How long? Yeah. How long would you have to wait? Uh, you know, I can't remember, but I was cognizant at that point, so I must have been, in yeah. a, like, you know, a, a older child at that point. Yeah, that's one of the first. Yeah, we get birth certificate, and then you have to apply for Social Security. Right. Uh, so. If you look at the price value on MANA, I mean, the, the chart itself is showing some upward motion there, although it's still very, very, uh, and this is, uh, this is versus BTC, so you got to take that into consideration. I'm just looking at the motion here, and we're seeing a, a lot of upward motion in it. It needs to move farther, though, so it can be significant. Okay. Uh, and I know that uh, MANA has also got a project for children in refugee camps 
where they're trying to get children signed up on MANA so that they, they, people can donate money to them, which I think is a great idea. Like. Okay. And MANA base is, again, it's a universal basic income. You sign up, you get a weekly, uh, weekly stipend to your account. It's not huge at this point, but if you sign someone else up, you know, if you give them a, they, a referral link and you work with them, they, you will get your, the person that, that got the referral will get double the amount. And of course that can mean also that that's more money for you to donate to charitable causes. For sure. So once we find out what we can do with those, refugee children once we have a, a viable link to or a path to give them the money I haven't seen that on the website yet uh, then we're gonna I'm going to send and I think John you mentioned too that we're going to send them the money yep definitely Cardano announcements um I see if I got the right one up here. I like Cardano. I think they're working on problems that need to be solved in the uh, in the blockchain industry. 51% attacks are they're still there. People are still doing them. I think Cardano is trying to uh, to solve those problems. Um, I put this up there so you could uh, take a look at some of the comments on it. This is on Telegram. Okay. Uh, Cardano is, uh, I think they're the, one of the future uh, tokens that people are going to be using because of the nature of the way it operates. The, the security, the wallets, uh, I just, I think it's, it's an important project. Uh, I think it's going to solve some problems. So I'm hoping that uh, once we, uh, want, I, and I haven't actually invested in Cardano yet, but I will because I think it's an important, uh, important project for all of us. Mm -hmm. so it's internet point three, so to speak. Yeah, it really is. It's all, it's on one of my, it's a, it's on my favorite, on my favorites list as well. So uh, and as far as their value goes, it's pretty much taking the same path as a lot of the other tokens and coins have at this point. Um, that's okay. Because as this uh, project becomes more important, and becomes more, uh, what should I say, uh, saturated in the market, mm -hmm. uh, then I think we're going to see the value of that coin go up yeah. significantly. Yeah, and it might not even go up. Like, it's not it's not predicted to be like a Lambo coin. I mean, you can, it's, a, it's like these guys are very astute individuals, professors and things like that that kind of put the project together. They have a huge team. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just going to be one of those, it, like these guys might figure out the interoperability piece before other projects like Polkadot and, uh, and other ones that, that want to, you know, be all things to all people. These guys might be the ones that, that actually pull that off. Yeah, I think so. I think that the interoperability piece uh, is something that's going to make this project shine pretty well. And I agree, there's a lot of people that, that are very uh, wise and knowledgeable working on the, this project. So I'm, I'm very anxious to begin investing in that when I get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and like I said, that interoperability piece, that is the biggest, like whoever figures that out, they're gonna own the next decade of distributed yeah. ledger technology, right? Because because they're going to be able to take in all of these different platforms and all the different programming that that is the infrastructure for each on the back end. And if you figure it out where you can integrate five and make it to where you can also be an Internet of Things or integrate smart contracts and shopping and commerce and all that stuff, they'll be good to go, in my opinion. Obviously. Yeah, and and there's going to be some competition in that area. I mean, let's face it, there's Polkadot. Uh, Cardano's trying this. Uh, Opherium yep. is another one. 
in which I think are all, those are all great projects. As a matter of fact, polka dot was one of the projects that I had listed on my my favorites list, uh, mostly because of the uh, the uh, oh use case. Polka dot uh, did make your. What do you got? Six on there? Six in the uh, top five? Put me research out. You're such a cheater. You're I know. Such a cheater. Well, I could actually added probably about five or six more. I know top uh, five. That's that's why it was hard to pick five for me. Yeah, because I, 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 Optherium is one of my favorites too. But I just I wanted to pick the ones with some use cases, and, and these are the ones I came up with when I looked through our list. Right. So, Orvium. Uh, this is a really Another use case project that, that's going to have a direct impact on uh, on the world, I think, uh, because getting research out to people that can use it and people to read and not having it filtered or not having it. Uh, uh, I guess filtered is the word I'm going to use. Filtered is important and i think this project is going to bring a lot to the market it's also going to help the the researchers which usually are on the short end of the stick in these in these type of things mm -hmm. it's the publishers that make the money the universities sure. and then the researchers are left hang out to dry after they did all this hard work yep there's like five major publishing companies they own i think it's 86 percent of the research and the the poor instructors, and I shouldn't say poor uh, university instructors, right? Because PhD tenure track faculty, they get a lot of money and they do get a lot of leeway with being able to do research and things like that. However, they don't get the notoriety they deserve and we don't get the access to the information that we deserve in order to really have it influence public policy and organizational decision making and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I think about is uh, a free market society where here we got guys that are just, you know, they're doing all this work. Yeah, they're paid good. The PhDs are paid well. But on top of that, they do this research and they write the papers. They should get something for writing the papers and putting the research out there for public use. Absolutely. And the, the, uh, they, they cost such an absorbent amount of money when these companies try to publish peer-reviewed journal and research that uh, none of that ever gets back to the researcher, I would bet. Right. But they have to go and they have to pitch their papers and do speaking engagements and da 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 da, da just so they can continue to be tenure track faculty and get notoriety and things like that. Some people can turn it into, you know, a textbook or a workbook or something like that, and they can make money there. But even still, the margins that you make versus the work that you put in is heavy. It, yes. And we're giving a lot of money to publishers and, you know, all these people that are in the middle of these large publishing companies, kind of like just middle managers for projects that uh, it's not direct. It's not direct between um, who reads it and uh, who writes it all the time. Right. So that's a good case. Uh, right now we're in the uh, in the Q1 phase and they're they're doing uh, blockchain integration right now they're going to launch uh, tge launch I, I i forgot what that was uh, r d and grants university and research labs programs so they're they're reaching out they're beginning to to bring this to fruition i think this is going to be a successful project because there's a big need for this one project I would like to, or part of this uh, project I would like to see them add is failed research projects. I'd like to see a category mm -hmm. in there that says, hey, you know, we did this experiment and it, it didn't prove out what we thought. So other researchers can use that and save time and money by not going down the path. Right, right. And like doing, doing some big data projects where you're actually connecting different research from different... Um, not only institutions, but different um, paths. So they're actually able to turn it into like a content analysis of, you know, here is a content analysis of all of the homeless data that we have, or 
here's a content analysis of all the decisions and, and research relating to this topic. Right. And figuring out a way to, to, to actually use it to make bit bigger and better decisions about things. Yes, I agree. And, and that can be done. I mean, there are ways to do that, you know, how you format your reports and your data um, on the system. So that is one of my favorite projects. I want to see this thing be a success. And I like the fact that they're using uh, space or astrology terms. Astro astronaut how do you say that? I, Astrological that is, terms? Thank you. Nebula, red giant, supernova. I think that's cool. I like that. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at the, the next one. And it's polka dot. Um, polka dot has not completed their ICO yet. And I now, of course, here we go. I'm getting a blank screen. Oh, see? Uh, they found polka you. Dot, <laughs> yeah. So polka dot is trying to build that interoperability system. And I believe they're going to be successful. Yeah, I think so. I, I, have, think, I still uh, have my reservations. I know, I know. <laughs> but you Go know, ahead. they're still they have some uh, as well. They have some experienced people working from on their uh, project. Um, I think, and I haven't seen a lot of new news on them. Every time I get a piece of news on them, it's like it explains the polka dot project, and it's like that's not news. That's you know that's. I want to see what the, where they're at in their uh, in their project. So, yep. Uh, polka dot interoperability. I know they got some competition out there. They got Ethereum, Cardano, and there's others out there. And I think I, I'm going to look that up because there's other projects they claim are working right now. I haven't seen them yet. So I want to I want them to be a success. And uh, my my uh, outlier here, my sixth, is Cheat. free search. Yeah, I know. I cheated. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely not going to kick you off the show. So let's uh, see if I can get up the, the, uh, the website here. Um, yes, there's the website. And if you go right up here, this is my version here. This is my plug-in to Chrome. I'm up to 165.75 pre. Oh, my gosh. You're a nerd. I only have I like am. 50. Dude, I just run everything through this. <laughs> everything. There's, Even if I know where it's at. There are some times, though, where, like, it, it, I don't know, sometimes my internet is just cranky. And so it's like, I'm just putting it up in the bar. I, I'm not waiting for pre-search to show up. <laughs> but, yeah. So let's take a look at uh, pre-search and see if anybody's making any money on this thing. Point zero three five. That's uh, that's a little move from the last time I looked at it. Yeah, it's down. Well, when I looked at it, it was like two point nine point zero two nine when I looked last. So, so what is the um, so the pre-search tokens that you have though? Is that the tokens that you have then, or is that the amount of money you have in tokens? Those are tokens. Those are tokens. Yes. So you have 165.25 pre. Yes. That are valued at three cents per. Yes. And you get a you get 0.25 pre every time you use that as a search. Every time I hit the button. And you can use you it as a it's a Chrome extension, and you can use DuckDuckGo, you can use Twitter, you can use any platform that you use to search. Let's go back. So. There, I see, you noticed I've moved pre-search to the front. I don't know why anyone would use Bing, but whatever. Bing, that thing. That thing. Duck, duck, go. Ether scan. That's cool. Coin market cats on here. Whoa. Twitter. And face. Well, Facebook thing. is good to be on there because everybody seems to think that Facebook is the GD internet. Face crook. Face, face, sell your data, crook. Yeah. So let's do something here. Let me, uh, let me type something in here. Um, uh, let me see. Type in Vim TV. Okay. There you go. Watch the coin flip. Meow. Bing. Someone just got. Now look what we got. 
Oh, interesting. Search on Search on DuckDuckGo. Let's see how the how, how they've done with their SEO on DuckDuckGo. Right at the top. There it is. Cool stuff. We'll go ahead and click on the Vim TV. We'll give a little tutorial on how people that might be watching the VOD on YouTube can watch us next live next Friday at 10 a.m. So you go to Vim, and you get your live now. You get a little bit of a, a preview on each channel. And if you scroll down, we should yeah. be there. Scroll down. We should be there. There we are, Morning Coins. Yep. We're live. Thank We're live. Watching. It's the one with the flag that says morning, M-O-R-N-I, by G1N Token. Right here. So you find your favorite streamer, you click on it, and you can watch live. There you go. Great. Cool. I like pre-search. I use it. I love this thing because I got a feeling that I'm going to be able to buy my new camera through pre-search. I have a feeling that you'll be able to do that, too, so long as they make their tokens transferable. Yeah, and you have to have a thousand. This is that's important, John. You have to have a thousand tokens before you can do anything with it. Right. So. Right. Uh, right. But I'm well on my way. All right. Well, I got to breeze through mine because I know we got to get going. Um, okay. So I'm going to breeze through mine, and then we'll get to our technical analysis and other stuff we got to talk about tonight. So, I'll go ahead and share mine since I fixed my slides. All right. Let me uh, let me get out here. Yep. Okay. Oh, yes. And let me get in this in the presentation mode. So I just put in a little news, too. For those of you guys who don't know, I've been using the Berminal app. Chaz, I know you don't have a smartphone, so you can't do it. But I've been using the Berminal app. Let me go ahead and share this with you, Chaz, so you can see it. This is another one. It's not pre-search, but uh, they ha they're kind of like an aggregator for uh, DLT, cryptocurrency, blockchain news. And you earn uh, berm tokens for looking at news, upvoting, tweeting, and um, like playing games within the app, like predicting the price of Bitcoin. And so I just put in here a couple that I thought were interesting. Uh, but the, the first slide here is from Circle. Uh, CEO of Circle says crypto is more a significant innovation than the web. And then the Circle CEO goes on to say crypto markets are oversold and some core assets are undervalued. Um, I have these in there. All of our slides are available for you guys to download. Um, all you got to do is go to the G1N token account and you'll see the link in the description on YouTube as well. Uh, so you can get those slides. I wanted to show you guys the third one, the one all the way on the right at the bottom. Alair opined that assets like Bitcoin will become much, much larger and more broadly adopted, and other crypto assets will be used in an incredibly broad array of everyday transactions. So that kind of goes back to what we're talking about today, outlining our favorite projects, and just kind of letting you know, yeah, Bitcoin will probably be the dominant one, um, because it's the, it's the most recognized as far as brand recognition and name recognition, it's the most decentralized, and it has the ability to, with all these exchanges, it's the most noted trading pair for for getting into other uh, digital assets so i wanted to just highlight that one these next uh, couple stories one is because cardano is actually a shared favorite by Chaz and myself cardano is moving to wyoming for its blockchain friendly regulations yes. so look for that yep they're leaving hong kong for wyoming wow and uh, i wouldn't i would love to uh, open up a G1NBC account in Wyoming and have some space out there for uh, the, the G1N token project and some of our other blockchain projects that we're looking into and, and, and making sure that we have a space out there in Wyoming to, to run some of our operations as well. So if you're interested in helping us partner with that on the G1N token project, let us know. Um, U.S. Congressman says cryptos deserve a light-touch regulation by the CFTC. 
So this is Darren Soto, congressman from the 9th District of Florida, said he believes crypto should be overseen by the Commodities and Futures Trading Commission and by the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, rather than by the heavy-handed SEC. According to Soto, uh, the securities laws and to cryptos can be very intense and hurt the market unless it is truly a security. He further advocated for saving the SEC for true securities. So I am definitely in favor of this. I'm also in favor of having a national association for uh, digital and cryptocurrency enthusiasts and making sure that we have a large group of people that are identified and on record. We can even use the Votum Project to, uh, to, to make sure that we uh, support people like uh, Congressman Soto um, to ensure that legislation like this happens and that we don't get this gift that's been given to us ripped out from underneath us before we have a chance to to move towards uh, mass market adoption and, 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 and true decentralization. Right. Regulation can be a double-edged sword. Yep. So. Yep. And on that, the last one is just the Samsung executive says decentralization is more important than the blockchain. And so that's what I'm kind of like, I'm another big proponent of. We just have to get away from fractional reserve banking, the current way the system is set up and uh, move towards um, just a more a more perfect uh, way to to trade, commoditize and have money. Um, and I, that's why I'm I'm bullish on blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology as a whole. And it just says blockchain is just one more tool, one that can help in decentralized context. But a tool uh, is less important than the goal. And so the goal to always keep in mind is decentralization. With that, I'm going to breeze through my coins. Uh, Bitcoin, and these are in no particular order. I just put them in there and I use CoinMarketCap. I just did a couple screen shares to get them in there. Everyone knows what Bitcoin is. Um, Bitcoin's here to stay. As with any new invention, there can be improvements or flaws. And uh, it just has a description for each one. I like the Cardano description, um, developed in by IOHK in conjunction with the University of Edinburgh, University of Athens, and University of Connecticut. Cardano SL, or settlement layer, is a proof-of-stake cryptocurrency based on the Haskell implementation of the white paper Ouroboros, a provably secure proof-of-stake blockchain protocol. So if you guys aren't aware of the Cardano blockchain, check them out. We had um, Crypto Cleveland's, um, we had a guest Damon. on from Crypto Damon Cleveland. Yeah, Damon Ramsey. And he's been, he's had a little bit of health issues lately, so we haven't been able to follow up with him. But he came yeah. on and, and did a great overview. Uh, so you should check out that uh, episode where of Morning Coins where we uh, went through the Cardano project. Next up is Steam, a uh, blockchain-based social media platform with three main currencies. Uh, Steam Power, Steam Tokens, and Steam Back Dollars. Uh, can, a, a great bunch of developers on this platform and looking towards the future and trying to figure out what are the discussions we need to have um, on the future of the blockchain and how we use it. Uh, so de definitely glad to be part of this platform. And I think it's a very important uh very important for what's going to happen next with uh, with all this stuff. The other two, uh, one is Digibyte, and I just have a description in there around Digibyte. I call it like blockchain's baby brother. But uh, some of the features that are listed, absolute security, speedy transactions, worldwide decentralization, ease of use, and flexible innovation. The other one is their, their security is really good, and they have five different algorithms they call it the five ALs uh, that you can use to to mine Digibyte. And uh, I think that makes it a great project. We had a, a special episode of the Steaming Pile and Digibyte uh, and Morning Coins, and that went really good. So they're definitely a project on my radar, and they have a great online community. And then the last one I included, I, I really couldn't figure out which one I wanted to do. And at the last minute, I'm like, you know what? This might be an up-and-comer. 
So the Brave browser developed by Brave Software, which is also the company behind the basic attention token, has surpassed 5.5 monthly active users and now features over 28,000 verified publishers. Um, so they're the ones that have the basic attention token, which some of you may or may not know is now listed on Coinbase. And so I think they're, I think they're moving in the right direction. Um, That's significant. Yeah, and they have, I mean, you want to talk about a use case right there, a privacy-based browser with a token that uh, allows content providers and publishers and things like that to, to better get their word out and have it not be as offensive as some of the other ad, ad revenue sites and, and information stealing sites uh, is a good thing. Have you, uh, you don't use that browser, I take it? No. Okay. I, I'm looking into it. I'm looking into it. I haven't. I just haven't looked into it yet. I think for one of my computers, I will. I think for right now, since my since my pre is uh, in with my Google Chrome, I can. I just love Google Chrome, and I, I I use it a lot. I know some people don't like Google, but I just have so many applications that I use under Chrome, and Brave just doesn't have that yet. So I got to figure out the best way to do it. You pointed me towards Chrome, and I, I'm glad you did because I was using Explorer, and that was just a disaster. Yeah, no one should use Explorer ever. <laughs> it's a piece of crap. So those Thank are my favorites. Microsoft. Those okay. are my favorites. Oh, did you those put you, those links in there? Yeah, I did. I, uh, you know your, what? You're the best. Charts. You're the best. Those are our trading view charts for each one. We're not yep. going to go through those only because I got a hard stop that I'm already late for. Our mana base links are in there, so you guys can, they're in the description. If you're not familiar with mana, look at Chaz. He already has 383 mana, which is worth .001 cents. So right now that'll get you a pack of gum. However, we're donating these to back into the, comp, the foundation or the organization that mana is choosing Um is, is is it a refuge, Chaz? Well, a refugee camp. A refugee camp. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm going to do. I think once uh, this week, I'm going to contact men and find out how we can do that, or if that's available for us to do. Yeah, and just let them know once they do pick to come back on this show, and we'll broadcast it out. Okay. You know what? The other part about this is, John, just to quickly, is that there are now children's accounts available. You can open up a children's account. What better way to, to show a kid that you ought, you can get some money for free and then you can give it to somebody who needs it? For or sure. If you need it, you can keep it. Yeah, that's right. And uh, our referral links are in the description. They're also in the slides. Remember, in the slides, those are anyone in the public can view and download those slides and just use those links to set up your own account. It's very easy, KYC. And... Um, they use a direct referral program to get people involved and interested in the project. You earn weekly mana, and we get a little bump in our mana for people that use the direct referral link, and you will as well. Um, so it's an easy direct referral program, and they are a certified nonprofit in the United States. So any purchases that you use towards towards increasing your mana uh, is also considered a tax deductible donation. I believe, but like I said in the beginning, don't take our word for it. Do your own research. Yeah. <laughs> we got a couple bold slides in here. I don't know why. Well, I wanted to actually show, I, I, I use gold. This is a, a ETF, electronically traded fund, mm -hmm. to show because it really lined up with the technical analysis really well. And so you look at that, those are Fibonacci circles that you see. And you, as you can see here, when those represent resistance and support lines. And you can see that the, in the, let's see, from the center, it would be the third circle out. You can see the resistance actually in operation there, that those yep. candlesticks couldn't break through. And then finally they did. When they finally, and I'm going to go right to the very outside circle you can see there, the, where the candle, the red candlestick is. Uh -huh. You can see that you're going to get near it, it just sort of backed off. So there's a resistance line there uh, for that. Now, if you want to flip to the next slide, I, what I did was I changed the candlesticks into a line chart. 
you, just so you could see the actual, this really is more of a graphic representation of how movement. that works. Right. Yeah, you can see how the movement works on, on the candlestick sticks when you change it to a line chart. You can see the very center line, how it bounced off the circle. And then it went up to the third circle, bounced off that, hit the bottom circle, right? Yep. And bounced off that and then proceeded back again and then broke through. And you can see where the resistance and the uh, support lines are very clearly that way. Sure. So I use gold for that reason uh, because it was very clear. And so this is another tool that you can use. Uh, and what I did was, of course, I, I took the actual bottom of that uh, fall or that drop in the in the chart, and I pegged it right to that last candle at the bottom. Okay. And then drew it from there. So oh, I just I wanted to put that out there for people to see. And they can do that, right, for yeah. any currency that they're interested in, in, in checking the movement for. Right, and uh, TradeView is a very excellent uh, free platform that you can use. Good. To do that. All right, what's next? Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. I've never heard of a RAF regression, have I? Uh, no, this is new. It's, it's very similar to the linear, linear regression channel, and it could be, in fact, called the linear regression channel. But what it does is it takes into consideration the actual high and low represented during the time period. So you, you won't, in, in this case, on a normal linear regression, you may have seen those candlesticks break through the upper line or the lower line. Here, you're not seeing that. But it's just another version of uh, a price channel that I thought people should know about. I did put a link at the bottom of the slide so that they can go and learn more about that. Uh, and of course, this is our, uh, our chart of the CCI 30. And you can see the last candle there, we just took it took it on the chin a little bit. I, and, I was but, just gonna say, it looks like it broke the line a little bit there. Uh, that would be the Bollinger lines that, that got broke, but the very bottom straight line. Oh, work. gotcha, okay. Yeah. The two straight lines are at the top of the yeah. bottom, gotcha. So um, we're still not, uh, we, we have some improvement, but we're still not showing a lot of strength at this point. So. Uh, your Christmas theory is not yet proved out. Oh, <laughs> uh, hold on one second. <laughs> I didn't say it was going to start a long recovery back to 17,000. Oh, okay. It was at 4,041 around that time. Okay, well, we'll, we'll give it's you back that. Back down one. again, back down again. Yeah, it got hammered. It's but... just called the Christmas bump. Everyone sold it after the new tax season came up. <laughs> Yeah. You know how that goes. You purchase and purchase the year and then sell the next year and take keep, a loss. Keep on rolling down the road in America. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh that should be it for the slides, I think. Well there's one less more the coin. There's one less. Slide. Make the price of Bitcoin go up, everybody. Follow our referral link. Go and invest a hundred dollars. I know that's a lot of money. Um Go and invest $100 so you can get in the game. You can buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever. You put in $100, it's in your wallet on Coinbase. Uh, we get $10 of, of Bitcoin. You also get $10 in Bitcoin. Um, so you put in $100, you get $110. Yes, the stock, or the stock, the prices fluctuate. And uh, it, is a, it, it is considered a risky investment. But I think what, like what we're talking about here is it is the future. And uh, so might as well get in now and uh, yeah, test the waters the with one. a little bit of money and and, and figure it out before uh, you invest more and, and lose that, too. Get involved because this is, in fact, the future. That's the biggest point is go in there, see how it works, get your feet wet, whether it's on Coinbase or Steam or Binance or any platform or exchange that you're that that you are interested in. And just use a little bit. See how it works. See if it interests you. Read up on some of these white papers and some of these projects that we've talked about or, or other ones and, and ask other people that are interested. And, and do, you do have to do your due diligence and do some research and uh, find your spot in the cryptoverse and see, see how it's all going to play out. We don't know, but uh, we're here. Yeah, we're here for you.
And we're going to be here next Friday on the G1N Token account on Vim TV. And you can also follow us at g1nbc.net backslash morning coins. And we'll, uh, I don't have the extra, the specific project, but I have a couple of projects that I'm looking at right now. So it should be a good show as well. Good. And there's another one I want to highlight soon that I just found. It's called Ren, R-E-N. Okay. We don't need to do that next week, but uh, one of our, one of the guys in Steemit, who's pretty well known, his name's Bernie Sanders. He's, I don't think he's the politician, but uh, he's, <laughs> he took his namesake on Steam. Uh, he posted about rent, so I think that might be something uh, worth looking into. Okay, I will look at that. I wrote that down. Okay, it's something about dark pool, blockchain, big transaction type stuff. Okay. There's stuff going on out there. I know it's uh, the, the this is an infantile uh, pro technology, and so there's that people out there doing stuff. You know. Oh that, yeah. Uh, it's questionable. So until they get a handle on that, we'll, we're going to see this kind of thing. And, yeah. And like uh, like the, some of the other ones said, until we get a handle on, on how these assets are going to be considered uh, tax-wise, we're not going to have any big investors because right now the SEC, all, all someone has to do is complain, call something a scam, and the SEC just slaps them down. Yeah. Because they kick the can down the road. They don't want competition for the Federal Reserve or for – for centralized banking. No, they're pr they're protecting their territory. Yeah. So of course, it's not in their best interest to to be able to actually look at each project and define whether or not it's a token, a security, an asset, you know, uh, uh, a, a universal basic income piece. That they don't want to. They're too busy. They don't want to have those conversations. But we need to make no. it happen. We are. All right. Enough bloviating. From me, you, of course, can bloviate. I uh, have no additional information to add to that, John. <laughs> see you guys next Friday. Yeah, we'll see you ne next Friday. I know, John, you got to be going to the back. So. I do, I do, but we will. Yeah, we'll talk again, man. <laughs>